Welcome to the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. It's Lori Rivers, and I'm back, fools. I'm back. Who's the fool? Me. <laughs> it's been wild and woolly, hasn't it? Um, I'd love to say that I've been, you know, overscheduled, which I have been. <laughs> it's not like, what else is new? Um, but it's really been that Saturn Uranus square, and it's finally freaking separating, and we never have to deal with this particular one ever again in our lifetimes, unless you're a baby just being born, then you might have to deal with it. But um, if you're not a baby, you may never have to see this again in your lifetime. Which is nice. We'll have another Saturn Uranus square, you know, in our lifetimes, but not this one, not the Aquarius and Taurus action. And um, I, for one, am glad with that because um, it's been my third sixth house. So I've been looking at how I expend my energy, how I share my voice. And it's not even like I've had writer's block. It's been more like the universe has been telling me, step back, get quiet reorganize, rethink things, Um, pay attention to where you're limiting yourself. Does that sound familiar? Has that been going on for you? Um, So in this episode, I'm going to talk about a couple of cool things. We're going to talk about the upcoming eclipses. We're going to talk about Venus trying Mars on October 18th, because that's magic coming up, guys. Um, And then, of course, like I said, we're going to talk about the eclipses. We're going to have a little interview with the brand new certified astrologer, Casey Felton Louie, who is also my editor and moderator, and she is an amazing astrologer, and she has completed her residency. She's done many, many hours. These practice hours, they they start out as kind of me with training wheels, but it, it just, it's professional development. Like I said, every single apprentice was already good at the astrology. Almost all of my students are good at the astrology. Um, I just kind of picked people I knew, I already knew who worked well together, and my natal astrologers do the natal readings. Um, They do a lot of prep work, and Casey and I talk about that in the interview, and you hear more about what Mackenzie and Casey do. Um, We'll get Mackenzie back on the show soon, but uh, I thought we'd highlight our newest, newest pancake, Casey. And she is golden brown and crispy. Let me tell you, she's she's got crispy just at the edges, just at the edges. Um, she, both Mackenzie and Casey are remarkably talented, eloquent astrologers, and I'm very proud to have trained them and have them under my wing. They'll be going further in their advancement, um, getting into sinistry and transits and consulting and all of that fun stuff. But you got to do things progressively. I think too many people jump in at the deep end before they have enough experience. And and that could be nerve-wracking as a reader. Um, ask me how. Ask me how I know these things. Basically giving them what I never got. So you'll hear more about that. Um, of course, we'll be doing patron shout-outs because we've got lots of new patrons. Um, we've been having some fun in the Discord. We've been having some fun in the Discord. We're doing movie nights this Saturday, um, October, what is it? Um, 15th. We're doing dogma. We're watching dogma. Don't ask, don't ask hell. I know it's not in circulation, but we found a copy and we're going to be streaming that in the discord. If you haven't seen dogma, it it is a very funny movie by Kevin Smith and it's from the nineties. Um, and it's Halloween season. So we've already watched Practical Magic. And then we watched Frank and Weenie. And now we're going to watch Dogma on Saturday night. Um, for our Saturday night movie night through October. Um, yeah, it's 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 a good movie. Uh, I haven't watched it in a long time. So kind of looking forward to introducing some of the younger members of the group to some kind of cult classics. All right. Um Let's see. Let, let's talk about the magic. Then we're going to have Casey. Then I'll talk about the eclipses. Um, do a pa- uh, patron shout out and a little juicy bit of info at the end. So without further ado, let's talk about some magic. So October 18th, which is one of my favorite days of the year, 
And it's probably because often, not always, Venus is hanging out around my moon at that time, um, or some other significant transit happens to my moon at that time, because hello, it's Libra season, I have Libra moon. Um, I've had some miraculous things happen on that day. Um, like, I, I, I don't even think I can get into it. <laughs> um, it, it, you know, I got back to the States with my kids miraculously in 1998, um, arrived on October 18th. I had some other significant events happen on that date. Some metaphysical events happen on that date. And this year I'm expecting absolute freaking magic kind of all leading up to it from pretty much today for the next four days. Today is Friday, uh, Friday the 14th. Um, and, uh, I think what we'll see is just kind of amelioration in our personal lives. Wherever Libra is in your chart, that's where Venus is hanging out right now. And she's going to be training with Mars in Gemini. This is quick acting energy. Um, You don't have to really do anything to get the universal gift. Okay. Now these gifts aren't necessarily financial. They could be, um, it could be money. It could be notoriety. It could get, be, you get some good publicity. It could be romantic. It could be your writing takes off. You could get some information you needed, but it could also be really subtle. It could just be, you kind of show up at the right place at the right time. And a stranger has some really wise words for you. That's a gift too. It could be you're seeing rainbows and butterflies and hummingbirds or sunflowers or something significant. It could be a song plays on the radio and that's exactly what you needed to take the next step at something. Um, Trains are unrestricted energy and there's nothing you need to do except be open and willing to receive. That That's it. So, um, you know, you look to where Libra is in your chart, look to where Gemini is in your chart. And you'll find some interesting information. Um, For me, uh, right now I have have Mars and Gemini transiting my 8th house in my natal chart. And Venus and Libra is hanging out in my 11th house. And so um, I I fully expect there to be some kind of um, metaphysical knowing or or a gift or inspiration. I've got some stuff I'm working on right now. I'm switching some things around and I think this will probably be the time the answers arrive. I'm I, the one thing you don't want to do is sit try to figure it out. Stop trying to figure it out. You don't need to figure it out. It's a gift. It's on the way. Um be open and and don't negate the little things because this could be very very subtle. Very subtle. So, and again, it could be a big deal too. It just depends on what's going on in your chart, how those planets are aspecting. Don't worry if like Venus or Mars is squaring something in your chart. This trine is still beneficial energy. And if Venus is squaring something by transit, remember, those are never technically malefic. Okay, those are never technically malefic. So it's, a, it's an opening time. All right. It's an opening time. It's creative time. It's asking you to get out of your head and be a little more creative. You know, come, come from a place of fun. Let the light energy be lighter and, and magic will happen. Now I'm going to talk about this in more detail for patrons tonight, February 14th at February 14th. What the hell? We're October 14th. Damn, Lori. What the hell? It's late. October 14th tonight, tonight at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, I am doing a talk about the Venus Mars trine and what you can do to receive. And we'll go through the houses and everything and answer questions. And this is a freebie for patrons. There's no charge for it. All patrons are invited. So um, you have till 6.30 to join as a patron. Um, so there's that. Speaking of patrons, let's do a patron shout out. Um, and then I'm going to tell you a quick story. Um, and one of the reasons why I'm restructuring and what kind of confirmation I got to, um, to continue on that track because the universe gifts us in lots of ways. But first, let's do a patron shout out. 
All right, it's time for a patron shout out. Um, I, I just did that, but my um, record button was paused. So we're gonna read through the latest patrons. Without you, there is no me, and I am wholly grateful to you. We've got Lauren, Joyce, Echo, Adrian, Kevin, Chris, Gemma, Jessica, Kay, Danielle, Sherry, Jill, Emma, Jen, Alicia, or Alicia, Yaz, Laura, Sabine, Aaron, Delilah, or Delia, Alleviation, I, I messed that up, I'm sure, sorry about that, Andrew, Wendy, some chick you don't know, Sarah, Rihanna, Jamie, Crystal, Christy, Lori, Abby, Jen, Kat, Hilda, Jessica, Sarah, Judith, Christy, Tina, Brittany, Sarah or Sarah, um, Ashley, Alyssa, Ashton, Jessica, Drew, I know you, Drew. Thank you for being a supporter. Melissa, Noel, Eliza, and Lauren. Hey, I want to thank all of you guys. I want to thank all of you guys for being patrons. Again, without you, there is no me. Um, thank you for your patience as I too have been struck by the transits. And, you know, you can look at my posting and you know, I rarely get quiet and I've been a lot quieter than normal. Um, don't worry. I'm coming back with a vengeance on the talkie talkie. Um, and so again, Thank you so much. One of the reasons I'm doing the free talk on the magical day, October 18th, uh, tonight, Friday, the 14th of October. <laughs> I can't believe I said February earlier. Um, is because it's my way of thanking you for being patient and, and accepting of me while I too slog through this crazy energy called the fall of 2022. Oh, I warned you guys. I warned you guys. Um, and, you know, just because you're an astrologer or a metaphysician, an energy worker, a spiritual teacher, it doesn't mean you're not also dealing with the heavy energy. You know, it just means you might have some more skills or more know-how. And what I have learned is if there's that much resistance, you know, if it just feels like everything's heavy and it's hard to move, that you just need to stop. You can't, you can't fight it. If you fight it, it gets worse. It makes things harder. Um, and I know we think, oh, I have to keep going. But if you keep going, you can crash. And I've, I've learned that the hard way over the years. And so knowing where the transits were in my own chart, I was like, you know, if I push past perfect, and I have been for a while, wasn't getting a lot of sleep. I was kind of burning the candle at both ends. And I was starting to make a lot of like <clears throat> little errors. There were lots of like recording errors and spelling errors and things like that. And that my eyes were getting worn out. So it was time to stop and recalibrate and rest and say, what do I need to do to make this mutually beneficial for me too? Because one of the things I caught <clears throat> with the energy, with my intuition, now this isn't the astrology side, but this is my in intuitional self. One of the things I caught is it's like this big giant egregore, this thought form that has us all kind of programmed, you know, it's part of that program. It's not really a sentient being, but it's part of that social cultural programming that you have to produce to be valuable. And, and so that constant grind and I'm like, you know, there's better ways to give you value than just keep pushing myself past perfect. Cause I, I don't think anybody wants me to like work myself into the ground or end up getting sick because I didn't get enough sleep or forgot to eat or whatever. So, um, it just certainly isn't a good way to lead by example to say, hey, you guys need to do self-care and then I'm beating myself up here on the other end. So <clears throat> I've been looking at how to make things better. So you, you will watch me experiment around a little bit. Um, I've been experimenting with horoscope deliveries. I've been... Um, just to save my eyeballs. The Crunch Report. I love the videos. I know I missed a couple. But... Those videos are, are certainly a save on the eyeballs. I need to do something about my webcam, though. I don't like it. So we'll, we'll see about that. I'm working on solutions with that. 
Now, I promised to tell you something cool, though. So these are all things I was working on um, over the last couple of weeks, you know, just really kind of considering and sitting back. And I've learned not to try to figure stuff out and being like your frontal no- lobe, being really in the thinking mode and got to figure it out, got to problem solve. I've learned to relax and allow answers to come. And one of the things that happened that was cool is I got to meet with the psychic medium, John Edward. I got to meet him um, and and I even have permission to talk about it. He's going to talk about me too, which is really crazy. But anyway, he is just the most lovely man. He is just as kind and nice as he appears on screen. We had a lovely chat um, and he had some really good insights for me. And it's kind of funny. There was, I've learned to listen to everything a person says when they're talking to you because they may not even know that the wisdom of a story they're telling that might be seemingly unrelated has some kind of nugget of wisdom for you to take home. And so I also have a really, really good memory because I have a cancer mercury. (laughs) And <laughs> we forget nothing. In fact, I, I have a photoidetic memory. And so I was kind of, I, I tend to replay conversations over and over in my mind. And there were just some things he said that lined up perfectly with where I've been at. Go figure, he's psychic. <laughs> um, but, and so am I. You know, and it's something I've been really thinking about. One of the things I was wrestling with was um, I, I, coming to terms with your north and your south node. Now, my north node is in Pisces. It was triggered by the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, which happened right on top of it. And it was opposite, of course, my south node and Pluto. because My Pluto sits on my south node. What does that mean, you ask? Well, it, it kind of means that my soul was very determined to be on its path. And anytime I'm kind of quote unquote off my path, it is very obvious. And one of the ways I get off my path is by being overly structured, overly organized, <laughs> overly planned. I can make great plans. Oh my God. I am the queen. I'm so good at logistics and organization. That's one of the ways I get so much done. And yet my North Node is Pisces and I'm meant to wing it a lot more than I do. And it's also the difference between being the technician that I am, especially when it comes to astrology and using my intuitive faculties, creating those safe spaces. So I I blend the nodes when I do astrology readings. But I've been kind of hiding the intuitive side of me. I've been not wanting to be present. I've made all kinds of excuses and reasons. Um, And some of that, I think I talked about it on a live the other night. I was talking about how I just didn't want to look weird. You know, I didn't want people to think I was crazy. And anybody who's gone through a lot of trauma, I think, can really understand that. Um, Lucky for me, I had myself diagnosed and have zero clinical markers. So (laughs) not crazy over here. Um, But I still do a lot of energy work. I still get a lot of intuitive messages. And I know a lot of you are here to learn more about that. So we'll we'll look at doing some classes, but also just some group readings, you know, where I kind of do a combo of, of different astrological factors and then do some intuitive readings. Um, it's certainly easier to serve a group with intuitive readings than it is astrology readings. Astrology readings are really hard to do in a group setting. Um, We've done it once or twice, but I will say that's probably more exhausting, that amount of mental math um, to do for a group of people. It might just be better to do intuitive. So, So yeah, so John Edward gave me a lot of ideas and some good suggestions and just encouragement. And if you don't follow him on TikTok, if you don't know who he is, um, Google John Edward Psychic Medium. And you can check him out on YouTube, et cetera. He had a TV show called Crossing Over. Um, he also had New York Times selling books. Um, hanging out with him was like hanging out with a favorite cousin. That's how the energy felt. And I told him that. I was like, 
because we both felt like there's a familiarity. There's kind of like a family feeling there. It's kind of cool. Um, I always love it when I meet somebody from um, obviously my soul raft. So it was like, oh, hey, we're we're both on the same team. Um, that was really cool. I think he is just the loveliest person. And I think he's very generous. Um, it, not just to me, like he supports a lot of people. And I know like I, for one, go around TikTok like late at night. If I can't sleep, I will go watch creators and they might not have like any followers. They might just be up on my FYP or something. And just like by quote unquote happenstance. And I'll write an encouraging comment. And it's funny, I've landed on some videos and I would be commenting and then I'd notice like John Edward had commented like before me and and was encouraging to somebody. And I was like, oh, cool, I do that. And that was before I met him. And then I was like, he's just that kind of person. He's very encouraging and he's very kind. And um, I value that. Um, I know on TikTok, I can come off a, a little bit harsher than I actually am. Um, I'm a stickler for, um, it's funny. He called himself the Gordon Ramsay of the psychic world. I'm a stickler for accuracy. And so I can get frustrated because of the pop astrology, but never, ever think I don't care. I think people who are sticklers for technique and accuracy genuinely care so deeply, not only about the subject matter, but the people that we help that we want the most ethical information out there. We don't like seeing people take advantage of, but we also don't like it when you let yourself for like, get some discernment. Um, So (laughs) I'm not mad at you. I'm not. Um, But I'm also always going to be an assertive person, you know, and in our culture, um, it, it just doesn't seem that people can accept a feminine, assertive person. Like I'm supposed to pick some other kind of identity. (laughs) And I I identify strongly as female. Um, And I'm assertive and confident. And I don't see that as a lack of femininity. I don't. Neither does my boyfriend, by the way. Um, And so it just kind of bothers me that people expect especially in the quote unquote spiritual community, women to be all soft and talk like this and be like, okay, guys, everything is okay. Every, everyone can just choose to do whatever they want. And no, no, there's actually rules and metaphysics for a reason. You can overstimulate your energy centers. Um, a lot of the so-called um, prophecies or predictions or psychic work out there. And no, I'm not talking about John or anyone he's taught. I know he knows how to do it, but they'll overstimulate their solar plexus or their crown chakras. And then they go into like mini psychoses, you know, any of those end of the world predictions, the humanity splitting into two predictions. Um, even like Dolores Cannon, I, w- I would say she had an overdeveloped solar plexus. Um, you know, because again, that making people divide, that's that's really, really, really unhelpful rhetoric. We are a singular species. There are going to be people we like and don't like. Um, there'll be people we're neutral on, people we're indifferent to. But we're a singular species on a floating rock that has a lot of other organisms on it. We're all interconnected and there is no other place to call home. You know, it's so I don't care where you think your soul came from. You're physically here. And we need to be very, very present in the years to come. It's going to be tumultuous. Um, And speaking of it's going to be tumultuous, that leads me to thinking about the eclipses. But first, but first, um, it isn't that you don't do prep work when you do intuitive or psychic work, but it is different to doing astrology or numerology. They take prep work and the natal astrologers spend about six to 12 hours preparing your chart, which is old school. I think most of them are getting it down to about six right now. Um, And so Casey and I talked about that. And I really want you to hear what Casey has to say about being an astrologer. She's inspiring. She's eloquent. Uh, Both her and Mackenzie make me very proud. I love them very much. And um, here we go. Uh, 
All right, I've got Casey here. Casey is the newest certified natal astrologer. Congratulations. Thank you so much. How does it feel? Um, you know, it was a little bit, I felt like I was in college again in a, in a good way, but there was some, um, you know, tension and, and working out how far I've come with astrology and just gaining my confidence. So it feels like such a huge relief and such a huge achievement for me to be at this point. I feel really good. Oh, it is a huge achievement. You, you've jumped a lot of hoops. All the classes yeah. and then the blind readings. <laughs> but I feel like <laughs> you guys, oh, that's part of it. Before they ever get to read people, I toss the most complex human beings I know personally as charts. Um, and they're all Googleable people. So nobody knows a name. What was that like reading those? Um, Wow. That was, um, I mean, since that was kind of the first assignment that we were given as apprentices, mm -hmm. I, I felt like incredibly nervous going into it because we were just given charts with, you know, just date of birth and location of birth and that's it. Um, <laughs> and you had also let us know that these people were incredibly interesting and complex. So it was like, I was aware that it was, you know, going to be challenging and I don't know it, it being the first thing and, you know, just typing out my notes and then sending them off to you. It felt like such a big risk. You know, I really felt oh. like I was <laughs> standing on the edge of the, on the edge of the building in a sense and just kind of like, well, let's see how much I know. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it was intimidating for me just because like I've been taking classes with you and, you know, just listening to your words and your wisdom for, you know, I think it had been over a year at that point. Yeah. And I really wanted to, I really wanted to make you proud. I really wanted mm -hmm. to do a good job and to show that I had been doing, you know, doing my work and I didn't want to let you down because I felt like, um, I felt so honored to even be invited to study with you um that i just wanted to i wanted it to be good <laughs> oh um this is so a capricorn moon <laughs> <laughs> um so i yeah i'm i'm very i i am very very hard on myself and so it was it, it you know it really felt like a challenge and 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 the challenge was mostly i think internal for me mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I knew all of you could disseminate the charts. I wanted to see your interpretations and um, because it gauged where you guys were at as individuals and mm -hmm. what I could work further. Like I already knew you guys were good at doing the astrology. I kept yeah. telling them that too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> They were still I, expecting some kind of like surprise test at the end. <laughs> For real. I think what it was is that I hadn't, I don't think that we had had, you know, we talk about charts and stuff all the time, but to, mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, submit paragraphs and paragraphs yeah. of analysis. Like I, you, I don't mm -hmm. think you had seen that depth of interpretation from us at that point. No. And so I was like, I mean, it really was mm -hmm. a test of like, shit, do I, do I, I didn't think I knew as much as I knew. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, well, I hope this is enough. I hope I'm doing mm -hmm. this right. I really, it really was a gauge. I, and I, yeah. as prior to that, I had only just, you know, your feedback and from our, you know, more informal conversations. So it was yep. like kind of the rubber meeting the road, like, okay, <laughs> where, mm -hmm. where am I at? I didn't know. Right, exactly. And that was kind of the point of that exercise was for you to know where you were at, for me to know where you were at. Um, if there was anything I needed to supplement in your understanding, yeah. um, just to and to see your interpretation of, of the different energy, because as we say, energy expresses 
expresses in a multitude of ways. Yeah. And so, you know, somebody with a Capricorn moon is going to express it in a number of ways, not just one way. That's mm -hmm. where pop astrology does us dirty every time. Oh, yeah. And he, you all nailed it. Um, and, the, and nobody got to talk about this. Um, these were privately sent. This was not done in group work. This was individ each individual had oh, to yeah. do that. And I, I gave the charts out at random. And this is very old school training. You know, this is how I was taught, mm -hmm. you know, and um, so it, it took a long time. How long did it take you to do the charts? Oh, gosh, I want to say that I spent, you know, like a day's work, probably two days. You know, I spent mm -hmm. most of the day looking at each chart. I think that's about how much. So I'm assuming it was probably close to like 12 hours of looking yeah. at the charts and looking at my notes and um, yeah, it's, it is intimidating because, because energy can express in a multitude of ways. It's like, you really have to weigh so many different factors before you kind of like pick what you think is most likely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's part of, of being a professional astrologer because yeah. you don't get to have an interview with the person before you read for them. You get, mm -hmm their date time and place of birth mm -hmm. and then you've got to figure it out and <clears throat> astrologers do prep work yeah so you know it it can be nerve-wracking as a new astrologer because you're putting in between you know everybody's different and with practice the the prep time gets shorter mm -hmm. um it already has for me, thank God. Yeah, what did you cut it down <laughs> from? So that was, when did we start with those um, charts? Was It was in the summer, I think. Like I, I don't even know at this point. Time like, has been such a blur. Right? It was like June or July, I'm pretty sure of it. Yeah. It, yeah, it was. And so, um, because you guys had to observe me, and then I had to observe you. So after the charts. And so, um, yeah, it's been most of a good part of this year, at least five months mm -hmm. that we've been at this, um, wow. at least. Um, I know, right? Yeah. Um, so you started with about 12 hours of prep time. Now, now what are you down to? I think I'm, an, I think I'm closer to six. I think I'm like, I've cut it almost in half. And, and, yeah. Um, yeah, it you know, it's, it takes me a little bit longer if it's right now I've done kind of a variety of rising signs, but I haven't done them all. So it's, it's probably for the few, first few times that I'm doing like a rising sign I haven't read for before. It's going to probably take a little bit longer than that, but I think mm -hmm. close to six hours now. Good. That makes it, makes it easier you know um mm -hmm. and and yeah it, it when you're when you're reading for people um of different age groups as well the different outer planets and how they oh, yeah. operate um it's always fascinating you know to see yeah. how that energy expresses just that much differently yeah um, and the same aspects in somebody you know 30 40 years older than someone else how they play out you know those are all interesting observations absolutely um, yeah because i hadn't read you know obviously i've been an astrologer a long time but the people who are younger like say in their 20s that come to me um you know they were babies if they were born before <laughs> when i was learning mm -hmm. so they're now coming to me and i'm like whoa that energy expresses so different you know yeah <laughs> so cool um so you're always learning absolutely you'll never be bored Casey um <laughs> I never am yeah I have so much to think about all the time it's it's fantastic and um also a little bit intense <laughs> it is <laughs>
It doesn't stop. It never stops. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't stop. We're always thinking astrology. Um, oh, yeah. So when you're prepping the charts, um, now you are a writer by profession. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so one of the things I loved when I observed you, because you guys observed me for, I don't know, minimum 10, 12 hours, if not mm -hmm. longer. Yeah. Um, again, I don't even know. I have to go back and look at it. We, we recorded it all, you know, yeah. we have a little spreadsheet. It's somewhere. Um, <laughs> it's somewhere. It's somewhere. It's filled out. But, um, but observing you and being there as backup. So it wasn't a test. And that's something I tried mm -hmm. to make really clear. You'd already passed the astrology. You were learning, you know, the professional development, et cetera. And I was there as backup. I don't to fill in the blanks if there were any. Um, yeah. What I loved about how you approach that is uh, you, you're, you're a TV writer. So you pretty much gave you give yourself a script for each reading. Mm -hmm. Is that, yeah. am I correct in my assumption? I pretty much try to write all my notes in a way that when I'm in the reading, because we, we just have the hour and I want mm -hmm. to maximize the amount of information that I'm able to give the person. So I try to make my notes as accessible to myself as possible. So yeah, it is like somewhat scripted. I leave room for, you know, any conversation or input input from the person that I'm reading from. But um, and, you know, sometimes things come up and I do have to adjust. So it's like I'm, you know, I can add to my note, you know, even even if, you know, something comes up that's not in there, you know, there's flexibility, but um, I do try to write it out in a way that's just easy for me to communicate the information, you know, concisely and. You do it beautifully. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it, it, I, I say this as somebody, as a young astrologer, <laughs> would have, I would scrawl my notes by hand and when I'm tired, my handwriting, well, they used to say I should be a doctor. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And, um, and printers and stuff were expensive. And it was dot matrix back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd be in the middle of reading and like, well, I put a note there, but I don't know what the hell it is. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, you do not have that problem. You, you really are so good at giving that information. And you do leave time. Um, one of the other things in my observation of you that I really appreciated was you ask for feedback for both if it does not resonate because energy does express in a spectrum mm -hmm. in a multitude of ways. And you're like, hey, there might be another way to say that. I, you know, there might be another way it's expressing. So let me know if I'm off. Um, mm -hmm. And then if I've got it right, please let me know. Let's talk about that. Why do we ask for that positive feedback? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I like to hear that, that things are resonating because it lets me know that I've gone in the right direction. And if something is not quite, if something's not quite right, and I've actually been pretty surprised at how infrequently people like it's it's pretty rare for them to be like actually that doesn't resonate mm -hmm. um usually it it does or there's it's almost like a little you know a little bit of massaging of the way that i'm saying it or kind mm -hmm. of just like a slightly different perspective it's it hasn't been anything super major um mm -hmm. so far but um it, it, i like to hear that i'm that i'm going in the right direction that it's connecting because one, it just makes the reading, I think, better for everyone to, to have that connection that we've, yes. it's not so one-sided and, and me, I don't, I, I prefer not to talk at people. I mean, it, you know, that's part of a reading is we are the astrologers, we're delivering information. So that's just how it is. I'm going to be talking more, but I, I do like, I have, uh, I have enough air, air sign placements where I do really, um, I like bouncing off people and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to have that interaction it i think just makes it a more enjoyable experience i feel like it makes me yeah. um it makes me able to deliver the reading 
just in the best way possible and to give you the best information and um yeah i think i think that's really it do it really well too um that <laughs> gemini mars and that libra venus girl yeah You're a I mass do. Football communicator thank you i it's it's um it's fun for me it's more fun i think to just have even just the, the little chuckles and the yes is <laughs> it's not much, but I'm like, um, you know, it, I don't know. It's a little like, I, I sometimes feel like, you know, we are a, a little bit performing when we're, yes. when we're giving readings and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like, if you're on a, on a stage in some kind of way, like hearing the audience laugh at your jokes or, you know, Absolutely. hearing them, you know, it's it kind of feels like that to me it, it reminds me yeah. of that feeling that i had when i was when i was younger and i would do stuff like that mm -hmm. um just the, the energy it changes the energy and it makes it it makes does it, more fun. it does it does change the energy and it, it it's nice to hear when you're on and you do it you nailed it and yeah um it just when you were first um uh, reading and you would be really nervous and I could feel it mm -hmm. and I could hear it because my Ge my Gemini Venus like have yeah. great hearing and mm -hmm. <laughs> when somebody would give that little chuckle and that is one of the signs and I would tell them hey when somebody chuckles you've nailed it mm -hmm. they may not say anything but they'll go <laughs> it's yes. that you know you've nailed it and um it, it, your energy would just shift and it was almost like you were shifting gears so like you were in first gear second yes. gear the <laughs> yes, chuckle you're right into third fourth and fifth gear i mean it's boom 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 and mm -hmm. um i'm muted during these and off camera so nobody can see me and i'm sitting there going yes <laughs> <You know? laughs> there you go <laughs> Yes, it's uh, a chemistry thing. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I thoroughly enjoy it. You're absolutely right. It is like a, a shifting of gears and yeah, um, yeah it, it breaks down any wall because, you know, you're meeting somebody that you've never met before yeah. in most cases. And, um, you know, for me, that alone without the astrology is I'm, I'm shy. I'm introverted. Yeah. So. Um, and so, you know, to, to kind of have a human moment with somebody is, it really helps me, you know, focus in on the reading. It really helps me. Even those little chuckles actually tell me mm -hmm. about that person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you're and, like, oh, that's expressing this way. Mm-hmm, yeah, ah. even the way that they will reinforce, even if it's so small and minute, it's, it, it does, you know, it adds to this picture. And I've spent, you know, as I've said, I, I spend a good amount of time prepping on, so I feel like I'm sitting with this person for hours and hours and hours before I even have the chance to hear their voice on a Zoom right. call. Right. So the more right. exposure I get to that person, I feel like the the picture becomes even clearer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, one of the things, about astrology that I think a lot of people don't know if they haven't had a reading by an, a real astrologer is how intimate it is. Yes. Because in learning to communicate, and that's the main reason you guys observed so much, because mm -hmm. I have specific standards about how we tackle tough subjects, how we mm -hmm. dance around certain things <laughs> yeah. and don't dive in to people's pain points. Um, there's ethics. Absolutely, and, yeah. Which I knew all of you guys had to start with, but it, because we're not therapists, you know, and most everybody has been, there's a Malcolm shaking it off. <laughs> um, most everybody has experience in therapy and there's kind yeah. of this, because we can go so deep, that teaching the boundaries in the reading of what we do Absolutely. and what we don't do but you communicate so beautifully through that um one of the things i was really impressed with but was how well you describe people to the point where they feel so seen and heard 
And that was the feedback repeatedly about, I've never felt so seen before. Mm -hmm. I got a quite like what, I think I got two thank you letters from your readings. Um, yeah. And each one, it was about, I've never been seen so clearly. Yeah, that was incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I take a lot of pride in that part of myself as just as a human being, I'm very observant. Mm -hmm. um, it's that Scorpio energy. I'm, I'm always watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always watching. I'm always collecting my data and um, in the shadows watching. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, that's just in my, in my life, in my personal relationships. Yeah. Um, I do like to, I, I do notice the details of people and maybe the small things that other people would overlook because I am just so interested I, when I, when I, when I have deep relationships with people, I can really go deep. And I do feel like that is something I really appreciate about myself because it's, it's been so rare in my life that I have felt that from other people. Mm -hmm. um, so I have noticed that it's not, you know, it's, it's not as common as maybe sometimes I would like it to be. So I feel mm -hmm. like that is something that with astrology and kind of translating that sort of natural, that's just how I am to mm -hmm. astrology has worked really well because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I am very comfortable with, I'm the kind of person that people tell their secrets to, you know, yeah. after they just met me, that's just right. always been, there's something. And I think it's because I am also somebody that it's interesting. I'm a private person, but I never, have shied away from the difficult parts of my life or who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just can't really help it. So I do feel like there is a lot of room for me in readings to use that skill and to try to try to frame things in a way where I'm seeing maybe the the beauty in in something that that maybe has gone unnoticed. Yeah. Um, oh, sometimes gorgeous. I think we yeah. look for the, we look for the big things in our lives as like, this is who I am and this is what's important about me. And sometimes it's like the small things that are just um, so natural to us that mm -hmm. we don't even see in ourselves because it's just like breathing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I try to point out, even sometimes I have thought like, oh, this detail is maybe insignificant. Maybe it, it's not worth mentioning to this person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's the stuff that gets the most reaction. Yeah, almost every time. Yeah. Almost every time. I remember mm -hmm. like multiple readings where you're like, I was going to leave that out. Mm -hmm. And you didn't. And, and that's where intuition kind of plays a role. You know, there oh, is yeah. intuition when we do astrology. Mm -hmm. And it's more like picking like which expression or what little detail is important. That's where we use our intuitive faculties. You know, once yeah. you've delineated the chart, um, you do that so masterfully. Um, uh, it was, there were a couple of times where you had interpretations that just literally brought tears to my eyes. And my oh. favorite is when you were describing the second house to one of your clients was love is a resource. Mm -hmm. Love is a resource. Uh, oh my God. That has just stayed with me. Yeah. Um, I learned that from you. Oh, did you? <laughs> I, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, talking to you about my own life and my family mm -hmm. and, you know, my family is very working class, they're Gen Xers, so they have a certain sensibility about them. And, you know, like many people, you know, I, I have seen the, the good and the bad of how I was raised. And mm -hmm. I'm very aware of it. I've done a lot of like personal work on it. But um, in looking back, and especially, you know, through astrology, like trying to understand how all of that has played a role in, you know, me becoming who I am. Um, it became very clear to me that the biggest resource that I grew up with was how loved I was despite, mm. despite all of the, you know, we never had the most money. Um, 
there were times where, you know, the emotional health of my family was, you know, worse than others. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, so in just kind of sifting and sorting all that pain, it's really easy to forget like the advantage that I had Mm. of how supported, how I grew up in an environment where I could do whatever I wanted. You know, there was no um, ceiling to what I could achieve in my family's eyes because they Mm. had my backs and they knew I was capable and they were going to be there for me. And um, that kind of a, that kind of love, I've never had to question whether or not my family would be there for me. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and, and a lot of people don't have that. And so, you know, you kind of pointing that out to me in just our conversations and I just in subtle ways, even just, it made me see that much more clearly and really, Mm -hmm. yeah, like that is, you know, you, you were the one that taught me that love is, is part of the second house. It is, mm-hmm. it is with, with, the second house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. with money yeah. and finances yeah. and other yeah. material resources, but, but love is, yes. you know, that's, that's part of how I've yeah. gotten to where I have been. That's been my biggest resource. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That Leo second house. Mm-hmm. There we go. It is. Absolutely. And, and it is. We don't... And I have Jupiter there as well. And that was oh. another thing. I was like, what's that fucking Jupiter doing? <laughs> right. And like, I was like, I'm not oh, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. But an abundance oh. of support because an the second abundance. house really, yeah. Second house is resources and how we mm-hmm. feel secure. And money is only a part of that. It is a representation of that. And in the last, especially, 20 years, I would say, um, they no longer teach about love in the second house and everybody kind of focuses on the seventh house, but the seventh house was never about love. It was always about contracts and marriage contracts. And cause marriage mm-hmm. was not anything to do with love until the 19th century. Yeah. And so, um, I think people have to back it up and, and study history. That's the other thing. All of you guys are, you know, history buffs or have extra interests um we're nerds yeah you're my kind of people (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. hello yes (laughs) nerd girl so my my nerdlings but um you're so incredible at that so um yeah and you just got your first reading book I did today yeah (laughs) um it was, I, w- I was not expecting my first read. I, I didn't know where it was going to come from. And I, so I was just kind of like, I handed it over to the universe. I was like, the right person is going to show up when they show up. And then, <laughs> and then I got my first reading. And so it just feels really good. And right. I, I don't That's think I know, I don't think I know them. them. So yeah, I was like, a stranger wants me to read their chart. Right. Yeah, it's know. a really good feeling. It is a hugely good feeling. And I, my job is to make sure people know about you guys. Um, and the whole reason I'm training apprentices is when I am one person. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm trying to take days off. Some days yeah. I'm more successful than others. Most days I'm not. Yeah. Um, and so by training you guys, in in the techniques I was trained in and then further developed as a practicing researching astrologer for decades and Mm -hmm. passing that on not only do I end up with a legacy of amazing people carrying on the work um we can serve more people and the one thing I want to make really really clear is I am a kind person but I am not a nice person. <laughs> and if I thought for a heartbeat that these guys would not deliver exceptionally accurate information in a professional manner, in the style I prefer. Now, granted, they use their own interpretation. And that was something I was looking for because Everybody resonates with people differently, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But if I thought they were going to tell people how to live their lives or um, dump on, you know, step all over people's trauma um, or say cruel things, they would not be reading for me, point blank. Um, Mm -hmm. 
Or if I thought you were going to dive into therapy with people, you would not be reading with me. Um, <laughs> blank Cause I'm not, I don't have time to unteach that. Um, mm-hmm. And in fact, I will teach professional development classes and, and professional astrology um, probably in 2023 to people who do have you know licenses or looking at getting licensed and what have you and how to add it in. But for what we're doing, you know, I want to keep it to the astrology. And yeah. so not one of you would have even, you know, been asked if, if I didn't see your capabilities. So I just, for the listener, they're not second best. Mm-hmm. I also learn from their perspectives as any good teacher will tell you, your students are your greatest teachers. That's why we teach. And so, and I'm also available when they're doing prep, if they have a question, I'm right there. That's the other benefit of, of working with me is I'm not like, well, you're on your own now. Don't ask me. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I bug them. I'm like, do you have any questions about your charts? I'm free. Come on. Ask. Yeah. You know, questions. Yeah, like it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know enough about how other people teach astrology because I've been such a loyal student because like, you know, <laughs> yeah. once you find the best teacher, I don't really know why you would go elsewhere. But anyways, um, I don't know of other, you know, programs that are what you've been doing with us. It's so it feels so special. Um, the type of training that we're getting and and also just the, that we have a group of other yeah. trainees that are yeah. going through it with us. It's yeah. all, all of it is amazing. It's very medieval. <laughs> I, I love that. It is. It's because this is, I had, I had mentors who were in their eighties and nineties, not my original teacher, but my, the further mentors I got. In, in the late 90s. And this is how they worked with me and, um, and encouraged me. And they, they, they were some of the coolest, weirdest people I ever had the pleasure to know. And they weren't famous, but they were mm-hmm. remarkable um, people with exceptional lineages. And then studying yeah. with, you know, Joanne Wickenberg, Jeffrey Green, Robert Hand, you know, all the, all the big daddies, Alan Oaken and I used to correspond, um, you know, it, there's just been a slew of people. I think Joanne was my favorite teacher. Yeah. Took a lot of workshops from her because it was hard to find women also professionally mm-hmm. at the time. There were a handful and I like Joanne's approach best. But what mostly happens anymore, it's very intellectual. And it was it was in the formal classes I took. It was more intellectual training. Right. But there was very little professional development of any. I, I don't know of any. I, I know people who would take on people to mentor. Mm-hmm. And this is classically how it's kind of done. Um, yeah. To my understanding, I didn't have that. Um, Because it it was, even when I was young, it was something like $3,000 to study with somebody like that. And what I wanted was like, okay, come in and then read for me. And and you're not tied, you know, down. If you, if you want to go on your own, you, you can, I ask that. And it's been an ask. It's not even a contract. Hey, be with me for six months because I know Mm -hmm. how hard it is to go out on your own. Because yeah. you have the marketing and you have to run everything. I'm like, you know, it's a hey, lot. Yeah, it is. It's a lot to manage. And I actually mm-hmm. like that other side of it. So I'm like, well, I'll promote the hell out of you. Just stay. <laughs> it, yeah. Why would you leave me? <laughs> but, but I would fully, I would be fully supported if somebody was like, yeah. you know what? I really need to go do my own thing. Fully yeah. supportive, you know never hold it against anybody. Um, That was not common. (laughs) Yeah. But you guys are are all just wonderful students. And I have a lot of students. Now, if you're a student and I didn't ask you, it doesn't mean you're not good at astrology. It doesn't mean you can't read. It it just, it could have been, I knew what was going on in your life at the time. 
you know, I needed people who were really available. There was a lot of factors in, in yeah. how I picked people. So I've gotten, I've gotten some people say, I didn't know you. I thought you didn't think I was any good. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> that's not it. There was a lot of things, um, including people who could work well and play well together and had the time. Yeah, we do a lot of stuff as a group. Yeah, it's very intense. <laughs> this is not, we just show up on Tuesdays. So. It is, yeah. We, we've put a lot of time and, and effort into our training and all of our informal talks about astrology. Like there's many, many, many hours. I just, the average person probably couldn't have done what we've been doing, um, time commitment alone. <laughs> yeah 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 the stars really i think aligned for all of us to be able to make that work absolutely i think that's a perfect place to end it the stars did align <laughs> thank you casey and i'm really proud of you thank you so much so excited so guys look with casey book her up we've got we've got a special going so check check the description on the podcast to find out your special code all right well that was me and casey talking about astrology and her journey and again if you're a student and Maybe you feel like I didn't think you were good enough or what have you. That is probably not the case. <laughs> um, I, I handpicked these guys with a multitude of criteria and intuition. And just I needed people who were like super available and committed. And not everybody has that kind of time. So don't think it's because I don't love you. I do. And there's more clap. More classes coming up, and in 2023, I'll be teaching um, more classes, more classes on reading, professional development. So if you do want to add astrology into a coaching practice or you want to become a professional astrologer, um, we'll be doing stuff there. I'm just not really taking anyone under me yet. That might change. Um but um, for right now, we're kind of good with what we've got, but we will be building other people up. Or And for those of you who just want to learn astrology, this November, we're starting a master class, a master class on natal astrology. So you can get in tune in a deep way with your own chart. A lot of times people don't resonate with that. Um, and I can show you why you don't and how to, because a lot of times what you hear about a sign or a placement isn't all of the information and, um, astrology has a lot to it. So, uh, check the description for the podcast for the discount code to book with either Mackenzie or Casey. You heard Casey tonight. Um, I've interviewed Mackenzie before and we'll have more from her. I'm trying to bug her to get in for an interview. Um, alrighty. So let's talk about the eclipses. So we have a solar eclipse. It's a partial solar on October 25th. So it's coming up. It is not visible in North and South America. So basically it's not visible in the Western hemisphere. In the Eastern hemisphere, it has a very small range of visibility, which happens to be Central and Eastern Europe, Central Asia, <laughs> part of East Asia. <laughs> oh, joy. Oh, joy. Because you, know, you know what that means. It's, it's Russia, um, the Russian Federation, Eastern Europe, a little bit of Western Europe, a little bit of Scandinavia. Yay. Um the partial solar happens at uh, two degrees of Scorpio. And I've talked about this a little bit. Um, remember, I've given my predictions for Vladimir Putin. I did it in the past. You can scroll way back in podcast episodes where I talked about Putin and Biden back in the spring. Um, 
This is happening inside of Vladimir Putin's 12th house, applying to his ascendant. I think he will have a betrayal. I think that he will be taken out. I don't think that necessarily makes things stable for Russia because the kind of person who has to be ruthless enough to get behind and pull a Brutus on him, um, it's a Julius Caesar reference, um, has got to be pretty much a brute himself. And so, um, so we'll see. No, I still do not see global thermal nuclear war. I will stand on that. I will die on that hill. I do see potentials for nuclear accidents. I do see potential um, for leaks out of the nuclear power plant. In fact, they're probably already there. You know, um, they're, they're fucking around and they're going to find out. And then now the good news is it will not be like another Chernobyl because that nuclear power plant was built after Chernobyl and has a lot of different kinds of safety features. So don't try to freak yourself. Stop freaking yourselves out. I realize it's scary, but stop looking for reasons to freak out. Um, people did that during YDK too. You know, and I was like one of the only people I knew who was like, doesn't work that way. They'll find a fix. It's software. It's not that big a deal. They just write some code. Um, and you'd hear people be like, no, my uncle works with computers. And I'd be like, software? And they'd be like, no, he does computer networks. I'm like, that's hardware. It's not even close to the same thing. So he's not an expert. Um <laughs> And funny enough, the world didn't end. I've lived through a lot of world ending predictions. So there's going to be a lot of that around on TikTok because especially this is a Scorpio new moon. Guess what? We have one every year. Um, we don't always have an eclipse with one, but this is just going to be like a kind of think of it like a super new moon. New moons are always a time to start things. You want to look at where two degree Scorpio is in your birth chart. If you don't know how to take a look at your birth chart, if you're a patron, um, every crush report, I put a link to your goodies. One of those is the intro to the natal chart class. It's free. If you're not a patron, you can book um, a birth chart walkthrough with me. That is not a natal chart reading. It is not a full-blown astrological reading. It is like a personal astrology lesson with your own chart. Okay, I did a sample reading tonight on TikTok, or last night, I should say, because it's past midnight. Um, and funny enough, the person who booked it ended up being on, which was cool because I didn't, I, I don't even know them, right? Um, or didn't remember them because seriously, um, I don't remember people <laughs> after readings. There's some people I do if they read with me a lot, but I read a lot of charts, so it's kind of. I let things kind of wash through me because uh, if I hang on to it, all my brain will explode. But anyway, she was on and she was like, oh, my God, that's so accurate. I need to book another reading. Um, and that was really cool because, you know, these are cold readings. I'm, I'm giving you an astrological lesson. Um, so if, if you don't know how to find stuff in your chart, you go to if you're a patron, go to the intro to the natal chart. It's, it's three. It's three videos. It's a it's a total walkthrough. OK on understanding the squiggles and the lines and what things are. And if you're still needing a little bit of extra help, then please do book a birth chart walkthrough. It's on sale right now for $111. Um, and that'll be linked in the description. November 8th eclipse. So you know how I always tell people you shouldn't worry? You know how <laughs> Just like I did not. Don't worry. You still shouldn't worry. Okay. On an individual level, that doesn't help you. It shuts your mind down. You're not able to seek solutions. The more you worry, the more you angst out, the more you disempower yourself. And yes, I do understand anxiety. I really do. Just because I bragged about having zero clinical markers doesn't mean I didn't have them at one point. Um, I had severe anxiety when I was younger. Um, that's how I speak with authority on it. Okay, and it wasn't just because I had a little something happen. I had really, really severe things happen to me in my life. It's one of the reasons I became an astrologer. I was trying to make sense of life, the universe, why shit happens to people. Um, you know, so I get it. I get anxiety, but I can also tell you it robs you of your life experience. So it's better to be cautious. I mean, caution is not anxiety. Being prepared is not anxiety. 
It's not. If you end up with too much of stuff, you can always share it with other people, right? Um, anxiety is the constant hamster wheel, the, the nerves just firing off, um, being paralyzed and not being able to do anything. That's an awful feeling. You know, I've never forgotten it. It's, it's a terrible feeling. Um, and so that's not worth it. Now, this lunar eclipse, it's a total lunar eclipse. It is visible in North and South America, um, parts of South America. It's visible all over North America. It's visible through most of Europe and Central Asia. Um, Africa, it's not visible, which that's probably just as well. There's enough things going on in that continent right now. They don't really need a total lunar eclipse conjunct Uranus. Um, I think this is going to really kind of, um, be wild card energy. I think we're going to see in the U S election, um, some upsets in the positive. Um, I think we might see people try to be disruptive and fail because one of the things is, is Uranus is still retrograde. Uranus is retrograde until January of 2023. So it, it's a wild card, but it's not as wild as if it were direct. So Uranus retrograde is a good thing right now. Um, we could see severe weather. We could see um, like tornadoes. We could see like high winds or electrical storms. Um, we could see internet disruptions. We could see issues with cell towers. We could see attempts at sabotage or hacking. Um no, I do not have time to look at every election in the United States. So you can't, I can look at election day itself, like for when the polls close, but that won't tell the answer to every single race. Okay. So you kind of have to do those state by state. And in order to do candidates, you need birth times. Okay. So no, I can't do Beto. No, I can't do Abbott. No, I can't do DeSantis. No, 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 no. If I haven't done these people, you can't. Okay. Or the people who are doing it are doing it with a chance of 50 50 accuracy. I won't do that. My accuracy level is really high. I don't want to throw out 50 50. You know, that's, that's not how I roll. So the one race. I haven't, I haven't looked at Kemp, but I did look at Stacey Abram. She has really contentious transits. Um, if she does not concede on election night and she decides to fight over procedure, it may be December before we see where she lands. Um, if they manage to duke it out on procedure, because I'm assuming there's going to be some irregularities, um, because he's done it before, um, then she, she has really promising transits in December. So if there's irregularities, notice I'm using conditional language. If there's irregularities, if it's a tight race, if there's recounts, if she contests, if she fights, she could very well end up governor, but we won't know till December on that. Um, Oregon, I don't have birth times, you know, so I can't, I can't run those. Um, not really. And I, I wouldn't be, you know, there might be people who would be surprised that Oregon or Washington could flip or California could flip. And all three states have had Republican governors in the past. Um, all three states have a large amount of conservatives and, and wackadoodle conservatives at that and white supremacists. Um, that is not just something that exists in the South. And I think there's a lot of rhetoric and a lot of propaganda when it comes to the West Coast. It's, it is not progressive everywhere. It's pockets of progressives. Um, but even in leadership, it's not. So Election Day is going to be contentious. Um, I expect a lot of very interesting things to go down. I am giving um, the Eclipse Seminar one more time, one more time to go through that in detail on what I see going down. And if you missed it the last time, this time it is happening on Saturday, October 22nd. And the link for that is in the description if you want to... Um, 
if you want to find out what's going to happen and I go through how it can impact um, people in general through their charts, looking at where those eclipses are falling and how to best use that energy, okay? Um, just because there's mundane stuff going on, just because there might be a crisis in the world, um, doesn't mean you need to own that crisis. It, it doesn't make you a good person to own other people's suffering. In fact, it always kind of bothers me if there's like some kind of tragedy when people own that where it, it's not directly tied to them and they want they kind of want to be part of it because it's historic or makes the news or whatever. Um, I, I don't think that's useful. I don't. Um, I think there's lots of ways to be supportive. I do. Um, and I just know from my own experience and my own traumas that other people kind of seem to just kind of wanted to take it or own it or identify with it because maybe, I don't know. I always feel like, is your life not interesting enough? Leave my, just, can we not have this keep going? Um, and I think I've talked to a lot of other survivors of trauma who kind of felt the same way. So it doesn't make you a good person to own things. Um, we can feel sad about things that happen. That's a normal reaction. Um, but if you're okay, that puts you in a position to be able to help people. And, I, be, you know, we're all the helpers. You know, we, we can, you know, as Mr. Rogers said, look, look for the helpers. Well, you are the helpers. So be the helper, okay? Because if, if we kind of lean in to any possible disruption or weird stuff that goes on, I think there will be attempts of violence on that day. I do. Um Given who we're talking about, especially in the United States, I think they will be poorly executed in a shit show. And, um, you know, I, I think I think they don't know how to do this stuff very well, um, but they're irrational and they're violent. And so it, it's important to kind of keep your wits about you if you have to go to the polls. If you can early vote, do that. Um, I wouldn't want to be at a polling station, especially in a very red district or a red state, because um, I think the, the crazies are going to be out that day, basically. Um, and I'm not just talking about people who politically differ from me. I'm talking about the people who think, you know, the orange man is like the second coming. That That's a problem. <laughs> because I'm like, woo. That's that's not good. That that's getting us so close to idiocracy. It's scary. Um, so those people may be more active. So just keep your eyes about you. And if you want to know more details, you can join me at the seminar on October twenty second. Um, and uh, you'll get the down low. I've got a great little presentation all ready to go with all the good info on um, world events, weather finances. I do think there'll be some financial fallout from the lunar eclipse. Um, and then how this will impact you personally. So I'm Laurie Rivers. I want to thank you for listening. I know I haven't been podcasting very much. There hasn't been much going on except recalibration on the inside. And if you've been feeling heavy, if you've been wondering if you're doing life wrong, no, you're not. It's just it's a time to kind of like stop the old patterns, recalibrate, reassess, and make changes in our lives to meet the new circumstances that are coming at us rapidly. And we're just in a time of a lot of change. And so we have to be very adaptable right now. And sometimes that means you just have to get quiet for a minute and observe. All right. Much love. Take care.